The first ever landing on a comet was filled with suspense, surprises and drama. Almost seven hours after the Philae lander separated from the Rosetta orbiter, Mission Control finally received the signal it had been waiting for. So we can't be happier than what we are now. <laughs> we definitely confirmed that the lander is on the surface. So we are there and Phila is talking to us. Uh, first things he told us was that the harpoons have been fired, rewound, and the landing gear um, has been moved inside. So we are sitting on the surface. Phila is talking to us. More data to come and, and to be analyzed right now. How audacious. How exciting, how unbelievable to be able to dare to land on a comet. We are the first to have done that, and that will stay forever. Hollywood is good, but Rosetta is better. Then the surprises began. The harpoons had not in fact fired, and the lander had made not one or two, but three touchdowns. Several onboard instruments, together with sensors and the landing gear, confirm the location of the first touchdown as planned within Site J, or Agilkia. Without the harpoons to secure it down, Philae then rebounded slowly from the surface at 38 centimetres per second. Over the next one hour and 50 minutes, it travelled about one kilometre before landing again. It then made a small hop, for seven minutes at around three centimetres per second before stopping at its third and final destination in the shadow of a cliff. The concert instrument helped pin down a possible location for the lander, from its first landing area shown in pink to its second and third touchdowns in the blue region. The nav cam has now confirmed that what was first thought to be a dust cloud shadow was in fact the fillet lander together with its shadow. Before the landing, we had a combination of imagination and animation to picture the surface of a comet. This is the real deal, the first image from a comet's surface. And the first panorama too, taken by the Shiva imaging system and including the lander's feet. The 10 instruments on the lander all need power to operate, but the unexpected new landing position receives less sunlight, only one and a half hours a day, compared with seven from Agilkia. Fortunately, the instruments could perform their science, including drilling, and after nearly 57 hours and a race against time to return the data to Earth, the lander completed its primary science mission. Against all the odds, the landing was a success. Philae is now in hibernation and Rosetta is back in orbit around the comet. The orbiter will continue to study the comet until December 2015, including the comet's closest encounter with the Sun in August. For Mr Churyumov, it was a chance to thank some of the team who helped the first ever spacecraft land on the comet he co-discovered in 1969. They made the miracle possible. Glory! Organic molecules have already been detected at the comet, and thanks to the Rosetta mission, we are one step closer to discovering more about the origins of our planet and the emergence of water and life on Earth.